Hello everyone! After having just finished a playthrough of Unrest, I wanted to come back and do a review about it. So this is a role-playing adventure game set in a fantasy version of ancient India. It puts you in the shoes of various people around the city of Bahimra, a city that's dealing with famine. The lack of food is pushing everyone to the brink. And you get to see the effects of this from the perspective of various different people, including a young woman in the outlying farmlands, and from the perspective of a priest in a temple that feeds and gives medicine to the poor. And there's a bunch of other different perspectives and different characters that you get to play as as well, that show you different sides of the same issue. There's a lot of different social issues that the game touches on too. For example, there's the Naga, which are a race of serpent creatures that are feared and basically blamed for taking food from the humans' mouths. There's also, of course, a huge class divide between the rich and the poor people living in the slums. And the poor people in the slums often, just all the time, die of uh, sickness or starvation openly. Just in the streets, it's, it's a very, very disturbing place. And the entire game is pretty much about making decisions. It's about talking with people, gathering information from them, and making your choices based on what you've learned and what you feel is right. It's the sort of thing that looks boring in a screenshot, but when you're invested in the characters and sweating over every decision, it's really engaging. It's a game of gray areas. There's no easy decisions, there's no wrong choices, there's no game over, just choice and consequence. And how engaging this is really comes down to the quality of the writing. How engaging the characters are, how significant the decisions feel, how interesting the story is. And thankfully, it does a great job. Uh, fairly frequent spelling mistakes aside, it's actually really well written. Every character just feels real with their, their own motivations and plots and schemes. Every choice felt very, very important. I spent so much time thinking over every option, as if it was life or death, because it, it often is. The decisions you make can mean life or death for you, for a loved one, or maybe for an entire group of people. This is actually the first game where I've ever truly roleplayed. I've played many RPGs before, of course, roleplaying games, but the truth is I've always played as myself. But here, I actually played it as a different character. I actually thought through how they were thinking, how they lived, and how I think they would react. And I think it's a testament to how good of a job it did at making me feel like I was playing as a character. That this is actually the first game where I've truly roleplayed. And I think a reason why it works so well in this game compared to other games is that a lot of RPGs have kind of fake and cheesy sort of black and white decisions. So for example, a lot of role-playing games have the goody-two-shoes kind of answer, and then the evil kind of character choice, choices that you can make, and then kind of maybe the neutral. And typically if you choose the bad one, you know, if you're an evil character, you're the kind of person that maybe threatens someone for money or demands payment or something like that. And if you choose the kind of nice option, then typically you'll be the sort of person that says, like, no, keep the payment, you know, I don't require any payment, it's a gift, keep the money to feed your family, something like that. So if you look at the decisions that you're being presented with in the, in the dialogue tree, it's going to typically look like the good option is going to mean that you get less stuff, right? You're being good, but you're not getting as much monet monetary reward or equipment reward. But the truth is, typically if you choose the, the good option that doesn't demand payment, or doesn't result in as many monetary benefits as the evil option. Typically what happens though is right afterwards, as a sort of balancing thing for the game, it'll typically give you something anyway, like maybe the character will say, Oh, thank you so much! Here's this family heirloom weapon that I've had in storage all these years, here, take this and go defeat wolves with it, or something like that. Any pretense of those sorts of decisions actually being something hard to decide? of actually having to weigh the benefits of getting more equipment compared to being a bad person. You know, you want to be a good person, but you also kind of need equipment and money and stuff to survive. Any sort of drama that can arise from that is typically just immediately removed right afterwards when the game kind of says, okay, you chose the good option, so we're just going to throw you a bone and give you something anyway. So typically there's no real loss from being a good person. You kind of just choose whatever and it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You're always going to be well-equipped and compensated no matter what. So it, it has the pretense of being a hard decision, oftentimes, in RPGs, but in reality, it's actually not. But that's not the case here. 
And I actually first played it as if I was playing another RPG, you know, as if I was playing in I was playing in that typical mindset of it doesn't really matter what I pick, just kind of play whoever the hell I want. You know, I want to be the good character, go with that, and then everything will turn out fine. That's how I played at first. And then my character died. I went with the, I went with the good guy option. And my character died. It was really shocking. I'm like, what? Games don't do that. You choose whatever option you want, and then everything turns out fine. And I had to be basically broken out of that mindset. Like, I had to finally realize, oh no, this... No, this isn't one of those games. This is a game where your decisions truly do matter. It doesn't just throw you a bone and say every way of playing is exactly... Exactly as valid, and everything is going to turn out perfectly fine. No. This is a world where this stuff is happening, these dangers are present, and if you don't consider them well, you could very well die. And I want to stress, by the way, that dying doesn't actually end the game, it just means the character dies, but the story continues. So it's not a game over. But, yes, characters can die, your decisions truly do matter, they're not... It doesn't just throw you a bone just because you chose the good guy option. Sometimes, if you want to achieve something, you have to choose an option that is not as pleasant. You can't always be the good guy and expect to actually have what you want come to pass, come to pass. Which is really, really great. I think the quality of the writing is, in and of itself, good enough that it can carry the entire game, and I would recommend it on that alone. But, now that I've talked about the writing, let's talk about some other things. So the art is mostly pretty beautiful. It's very painterly looking, it's very smooth. There's not a lot of sharp edges or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a very pretty game, for the most part. Um, the only thing I would say about the art that I didn't like is the characters. I feel like the character designs are a little bit weak. Especially the hands of the characters, which probably sounds kind of strange, but they creep me out. The, um, the hands of the characters don't actually have fingers. Not really, they're just kind of like blobs. As if the people were made out of wax and, like, got their hands a little bit too close to a a flame, and their hands just kind of melted into blobs. I, I don't know, it's really creepy, and the way they move is a little bit strange. So I don't care for the character designs all that much, but I think the background art is very, very good. Also, the music is wonderful. Now I want to mention something that is without a doubt my biggest complaint, and that's that sometimes it's poorly designed in a way that really screwed me over. This happened in two different cases, so let me mention both. The first one was when I was playing as a character and I was trying to escape. And I'd heard that there were valuables kept in a very well-guarded location. And I wanted the valuables to spend on supplies and stuff like that to escape. To run away. And to get inside, I ended up talking to one of the guards who was a bit of an idiot. So I just managed to talk my way past him. He wasn't very bright, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So I talked my way past this guard, which got me into this location. And for some very silly reason, the the valuables were just a pile on the ground outside, just like in the yard. So this, this is broad daylight, I'm in the yard of a building, I just talked my way past a guard, and the valuables are just sitting on the ground in broad daylight, just kind of haphazardly tossed there. It, it made no sense why the valuables would be there rather than inside in some guarded location, but nonetheless, there they were on the ground. The thing is though, the guard I just talked my way past was staring at me. He, he was looking right at me. So I, I was thinking, there's no way I can pick this stuff up, right? Picking up a sack of valuables while this guard is literally staring at me is not a good idea. Because he would just say, hey, you're stealing stuff, I'm going to arrest you or whatever. <laughs> it obviously wouldn't work. And there was also a couple other guards in the yard that seemed to be looking away from me. It's a little bit hard to tell if they were actually looking away from me because the perspective of the game makes that a little bit difficult. But nonetheless, it seemed like they were looking away from me. So I went up to them, 
because I thought, okay, if this guard's looking at me, there's no way I can steal this stuff, so maybe I need to talk to the guards and maybe, like, come up with some sort of a distraction, like, hey, I saw something happening over there, and maybe they'll, like, turn around or walk away, and then I can steal the stuff, or something. I wasn't sure, but it seemed obvious that picking up a bag of money and goods and stuff while a guard is looking at me was not going to work, so I started doing some other stuff. And that other stuff was walking up to these other guards inside of the yard that I just talked my way into. I go up to them, and they say, Hey, you're not supposed to be here! And they kick me out. So I try to re-enter by once again talking to the guy that I talked my way past before. He's the only one actually guarding the door, the other two guards were just inside of the yard. I talk to him again, and he says, No, you can't come in. And that's the end of that. I, I can never go in ever. That, that's it. I can't re-enter. So, <laughs> it, it doesn't make any sense from multiple perspectives. For one, I, I'm assuming you're just supposed to pick up the stuff, even though the guard is looking at you. Which doesn't make any damn sense. It also doesn't make any sense why these goods would just be on the ground when they're incredibly valuable. It also doesn't make any sense why the guards would just instantly kick you out when you talk to them. Because I just talked my way in by by way of one of the guards. I talked to the guard and he let me in. You know, I didn't, like, sneak my way in. I talked to a guard and was let in. So why would these other guards instantly throw me out? I, I have the guard's blessing to be there. Why would you kick me out? I mean, even if you find it a bit suspicious, at the least you would say, like, Hey, how did you get in? And then you ask either the other guard, you know, like, what is this, what is this person doing here? But no, it's instantly, you're not supposed to be here, get out, and you can never come in again. It just totally ruined that scene. And it completely changed my plans. And it just, it just wasn't well designed at all. The second case was when I was trying to find medicine for a sick person. So there was this really sick guy that I talked to, and I said, I promised him that if I found medicine, I would give the medicine to him. This was in the slums, by the way. So, the place where all the poor people and sick people and starving people are. I said, okay, I'll help you if I can find some medicine. And I kept on exploring, and I actually ended up finding some medicine. But I didn't take the medicine to him right away. Instead, I kept exploring in the direction that I was going before. I was going to kind of explore the rest of the level and then bring the medicine back. So I keep exploring, going the way I was going before, and then I start making my way back to go and give him the medicine. And then someone talks to me. And uh, I don't want to give any spoilers here, so I'm going to be very vague. But it's someone who had been searching for me. And it's... I'm supposed to go with them. Because they've been looking for me for a long time and they need me with them. So I'm supposed to go with them. But it's not a time-sensitive thing. I'm not in danger. They don't need me there that second. But nonetheless, I'm supposed to go with them. And then, without giving me any decision whatsoever, no way to avoid this, the scene and my, my time of playing as that character ends. And it switches to a different character. So I had gotten the medicine for the sick man, and on my way back to give it to him, the game actually forced the scene to end so I could never give him the medicine, even though there was no reason it had to end, because I was talking to this person, and again, I did not need to come at that second. I didn't need to go with him. It wasn't like, oh my god, you're in danger, come with me right away. I didn't need to go with him, he could have waited a couple minutes. There was no pressing need to go. But the game just kind of like forgot, I guess, that I had the medicine and just assumed I wanted to end it, and didn't give me an option to say... I mean, it didn't, give me, it didn't give me an option to say, Hey dude, I know you want me to come with you, but if you just give me one minute, I can give this medicine to this person so that he won't die. But no, I had no such option. And the scene just ended. It was so abrupt and just weird. It just didn't work at all. And I should mention, by the way, with these two different things that happened, I should mention the difficulty. Of the game. So the game has two different difficulty settings. One is basically standard and the other is Iron Man. And in the standard mode, you can reload your save game. You, I, I think you can make multiple saves and reload them, but in Iron Man you only have one save. So your decisions are permanent. You can't go back, you can't restart the chapter, nothing like that. Every single thing you do is permanent. And when you have a difficulty setting like that, which is what I chose, by the way, I went with the Iron Man, because I wanted my decisions to have weight. I wanted them to have permanence. And when you have a mode like that, when you have an Iron Man mode, the player has to trust the game to be well-designed. The player has to trust the game to be fair and not screw them over. Because if you do that, 
the player can't go back and, and fix the problem. You know, if something happens that is just completely ridiculous and unfair, you can't reload a save game and go fix it because it's Iron Man, you only have one save. You can't do that. And that's exactly what happened here. The game screwed me over in a couple ways that just made no sense whatsoever, and I couldn't fix it because I was in Iron Man mode. So unfortunately, with a difficulty setting like that, you really need to have a, a, a bond of trust with the game. And unfortunately, the game doesn't actually deserve that trust because it can screw you over in a couple different ways. So if you're gonna play, I would highly recommend playing on a normal difficulty. And if something ridiculous like that happens, just reload your game, because it really shouldn't happen. But despite that, those were significant things that, that, uh, that hurt my experience, but they're relatively minor compared to the quality of everything else, in particular the writing, which is without a doubt its greatest strength. So overall, it's, it's a game that puts you into the shoes of a bunch of different people, and it asks you, what would you do in this situation? And the writing is so good that that question has a hell of a lot of weight to it. Unrest is available from a bunch of different places, including the official site Steam and GOG. There's also a demo that you can play as well. I'll have links to all of that in the description. Thank you for watching.